Well, we are still waiting to get information about how many victims there are. We don't know how many casualties. We do not know how many people may have died from this. But what we do know is that people were shot both inside and outside of the building. We talked to some employees that were there and they said they heard multiple gunshots going mm -hmm. on just after 11 o'clock Thursday evening. Police immediately responded and what they're hearing is just a nightmare that's becoming a reality for far too many people. We're going to really? hear from one of the employees right now. I opened my chips, got my sandwich, about to take a bite. He was about to take a bite out of his sandwich and we heard two metal, loud metal clangs at first because they weren't, they didn't sound like gunshots at first. They made, because there was a, again, there was a loud clang after the first two and then my buddy Levi stood up as he was like kind of squatting at the bench and then looked over and out into the parking lot, didn't see anything yet. And then we heard three more shots. And then my buddy Levi saw someone running out of the building and then more shots went off. Somebody went behind their car to the trunk and got another and got another gun. And then I saw one body on the floor. And our Cornelius Hawker was at the scene. This was just after that shooting happened when he talked to this employee. So obviously a lot of emotions and trying to process everything that had happened. Again, this is at a FedEx facility. Correct. And we have a lot of different uh, police and uh, law enforcement agencies mm -hmm. involved in this, trying to gather all this information. And we really are working to get the updated information to you as soon as possible. We've only had one press conference so far. We're waiting on another one. And so far we have a statement from FedEx as well. It says, quote, we are aware of the tragic shooting at our FedEx ground facility near the Indianapolis airport. Safety is our top priority and our thoughts are all with those who are affected. We are working to gather more information and are cooperating with investigating a authorities end quote and, and we recently did just get that statement and mm -hmm. right now there's a lot of people that are waiting to figure out what happened including us but more importantly the families, families. of those affected mm -hmm. so police did say that for those families that they should go to the Holiday Inn Express that is located at 8555 Stansted Drive so 8555 Stansted Drive if you are waiting to hear information you are asked to go there where police are waiting to talk to you as well while we figure out who may have been a victim of this and you know Amanda also there the chaplain so they are mm -hmm. there to assist in this process and really um, be there in this time of a lot of stress a lot of confusion a lot of anxiety and, and of course subsequently loss Yes, and again, there's a lot of people involved in this. This is a FedEx facility. This is also this FedEx facility here in Indianapolis, we are told is the second largest operating FedEx facility in the country. So there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of impacts because of this event. Again, we do want to tell you that the suspect has been found and there is no threat to the community. That is what IMPD recently told us about an hour ago in the one media briefing they gave us. At this time, we're just waiting to hear from the police again with another mm -hmm. update that should be coming shortly. And that is what we are waiting on at this time. And we do know that Ameriplex Parkway is also closed. I-70 was closed earlier. Now it is back open. So for those who are trying to hit the roads, trying to connect with those loved ones, just giving you a heads up in that. And we do know to recap just a little bit too, that during that one police briefing from from IMPD so far, they say the shooter, quote, took his own life. So that is according to IMPD. Um, that is what we have confirmed. And there's no longer, as you said, an active threat to the community. And we know that IMPD, to provide some context, has even done active shooter trainings most recently. Um, and, and this is really just unbelievable to see in our own community. And again, to catch you up, we are following a mass casualty situation on Indianapolis's southwest side. You can see here from our Google Maps that's going in and you can see it is near Indianapolis International Airport. Now, they this is at the FedEx ground facility near there. So they have increased security at the FedEx facility where those planes are taking off at the airport site but it was the FedEx ground facility where this situation took place tonight, where multiple people at the FedEx ground facility were shot both inside and outside of mm -hmm. the building. We are hearing stories from people who were in the parking lot and those who were inside. We're also hearing from people that 
were inside and from people just talking mm -hmm. to us through Facebook and all the different social media avenues that at this FedEx facility apparently employees cannot have their cell phones inside it's just a work policy now this is just what we're hearing from Correct. people online but you can only imagine in a situation like this where your first instinct is to make sure you call your loved ones if mm -hmm. you can't even get a hold of them so obviously really? creating a very chaotic and hectic scene there so that's why families are being urged if you have not heard from your loved ones if you know they are working there tonight or were working there at that time to go to the Holiday Inn Express at 8555 Stansted Drive, and that's where families are being directed. And just in Amanda, we also have an interview from a woman whose brother works at that facility, according to her. Our crews in the field gathered this, and let's take a listen to what she has to say. It's just been crazy, hectic. No one knows anything. We go first, go over there to um, FedEx, then they send us over there to the Marriott, then we come over here, we get in here, no one knows anything. They just telling us basically to just wait in the the buses is gonna come and they said that'll be like 30, 45 minutes. It's been what, an hour and a half? Mm -hmm. If if not longer. We don't know anything. We they're not no one's responding to phone calls. We don't know nothing. We're just sitting here waiting. It's 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 actually ridiculous really. No one knows anything. Even like when we're sitting here listening on the news live, it's just they're just repeating the same thing. Just come over here to the Holiday Inn if you got loved ones that you're looking for. But that, that's all they're saying. My heart just goes out to them because mm -hmm. I cannot imagine what it's like to have to wait just to find out what happened to your family member that was at work. Yes. At work on an overnight shift. I, it, it's just it's a worst really case tough. scenario. Really. Mm -hmm. So again, we are still waiting to get more information as you just heard mm -hmm. from her. We are waiting for more information. We do not know how many people are a victim in this situation, but we do know multiple people have been shot both inside and outside of the building. And that's right. Our team is really working hard to make sure we bring you accurate, fact-checked information and not to jump ahead of things, right? So we're mm -hmm. gathering all that we can. We're verifying it with the police department and with officials to make sure that you guys have accurate information. And as we were talking about hearing from the woman who is a brother who is a sister to one of the employees there i mean your heart just goes out to them mm -hmm. but sometimes it's the not knowing amanda you and i were talking about this earlier too that just it hits home and it's uh it's so hard to deal with and we can only imagine what's going to be coming in the next couple of days we have seen multiple shootings happening just in 2021 um and it's just happening across the country at this point mm -hmm. And Everyone is picking up on run, hide, fight, right? That is mm -hmm. what the FBI suggests for people to do in these situations. But you can imagine in a time of panic and a time of stress, those endorphins are going. It's, it's hard. And, and what do you do, really? I mean, you do as best as you can. And you do what you're told and you do what your gut says in that moment. Yep. And that's what we were hearing with those employees that our Cornelius Hawker talked to earlier today. We also want to express that the FedEx facility at the airport is an extremely busy place with how much goes on there. There's a lot that's going to impact mm -hmm. what's going to happen across the country when it comes to mail. Correct. So we're going to be following that and see what happens with that. We are also expecting to probably hear from the president within a couple of hours on gun control mm -hmm. and what he has to say. He's been very vocal about that recently. So Indianapolis is going to be added to that list of most likely what President Biden will be speaking about when it comes to gun control. Correct. And I, I know you mentioned this earlier, you know, that Indianapolis International Airport FedEx facility itself is one of the second busiest in the yes. nation. So yes. it is a very busy area around there, a very busy airport. According to Rafael Sanchez, mm -hmm. we have extra or there are extra law enforcement personnel around the airport or at the airport, so that's important to note. And Megan, in light of the events that have happened, IND has added, added extra security at the airport site for the FedEx airport site. This shooting happened at the FedEx ground facility, which is off-site, mm -hmm. but near Indianapolis International Airport. The I-70 between I-465 and Ronald Reagan Parkway was closed earlier this evening. After this happened, that has been reopened, so traffic is moving through there. We are still trying to figure out these details. Let's go over that timeline one more time for you. 11.07 p.m. Thursday night, so just a few hours ago, just after 11 o'clock, the first reports of 911 calls. We are told 911 calls, it was being inundated with calls. 
because of how many gunshots people were hearing and how many people heard them at the time. 1123 is when police indicate that they may have found the suspect, the person responsible for that shooting. They said that person responsible had been found deceased. At 1140, chaplains were paged to come to the FedEx facility to be there, to talk to people that are there, to the families that are infected. At 1245, SWAT teams report that they had cleared the building. We do know that Indigo was also called in to help bus employees out of the area and mm -hmm. evacuate employees out of that area. At this time, we don't know for sure if employees are still on site, if they're being questioned, if they can go home and what's happening with that. So we do have crews at the scene working to get those answers for us. And Amanda, just and we're monitoring social media as well. So we do have an information in from Representative Andre Carson. And here's what it says. It's I am heartbroken by the mass shooting at the FedEx facility here in Indianapolis and praying for all affected by this tragedy. He goes on to say, I am communicating with local authorities to get all details of the attack and my office stands ready to help everyone affected any way we can. So that in from Andre Carson and we'll continue to, you know, update you on everything mm -hmm. that we get. I mean, we've reached out to FedEx to see if they're able to communicate with us as well. Obviously, it's a very hectic moment for them. We've reached out to law enforcement. They are expected to give us another media briefing coming up soon. We have all hands on deck really Amanda we do and those crews at the scene are waiting for a media briefing so we can hear from the police now for a second time the first time we heard from them was in the 1 a.m. hour mm -hmm. so and at that time that is when we all learned about the threat to the community they said there is no threat to the community at the time and that they had found the suspect deceased I do want to talk about when we heard from the PIO from IMPD when she was telling us this information in the one o'clock hour, the you emotion could, you could hear the emotion, you could see it on her face. It was very difficult for her to give that information, which is something she does all the time. That is her job to give information mm -hmm. from shootings, from scenes like this. I mean, we don't have scenes like this all the time, but it, they're always going to be a difficult situation. But you could just see it was overpowering for her. She's so, so professional, and to see someone who really is. Mm -hmm. So shaken by that, you know, it says a lot. It's a lot of empathy there, and it, it makes it difficult to think about what she's going to be talking about next and what she knew yeah. at that time. And, and I think tell. we're all mentally bracing ourselves, right, for, for just what's to come. And, yes. um, and this is something we never want to see in our community. And that's what we're waiting for. We do have crews at the Holiday Inn Express where families are waiting to get this information. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're going to hear. You're hoping you don't hear the worst. Some of them might hear the worst thing they've ever heard in their life right, right. now. And that's what we need to think about now and in our thoughts and our prayers mm -hmm. that they find peace. Yeah. And, and these are Hoosier families and these are people from our community that have been impacted by something so tragic for mm -hmm. a reason that we don't know why this happened, why Hoosiers went to work tonight. Or how many Hoosiers happened. were impacted, really. We're, we're waiting for that number, sadly, right? Mm -hmm. You know, how many Hoosiers were shot? I mean, at this point, IMPD says multiple people shot, so that could mean anything. And uh, many people are on social media. You're seeing all these different reports coming in, people saying, I heard this, I heard mm -hmm. this, I heard this. What we can tell you is we haven't been given numbers yet. We do not know how many people have been impacted. There's no confirmation on that yet. So if you are seeing that online, there's no confirmation on that from, from the official sound where that should be coming from. And that's what we're waiting on at this mm -hmm. point. So. And it's a lot to process. It's a lot to go through to make sure they have all the information correct. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked with many experts in the past, mm -hmm. right? As journalists, we speak with police, with FBI, and, and it's always a process to go mm -hmm. through this stuff to figure out all the unknown questions. How many? Why did this happen? And, you know, so far we have it confirmed that, quote, the shooter took his own life, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no longer an active threat to the community, but we still don't know how many people truly lost their lives in this situation. And that's what we're waiting for at this hour. Mm -hmm. Throughout the next couple of days, even just throughout the morning ahead of us for Good Morning Indiana, there's going to be a lot of questions to be had of why did this happen? Mm -hmm. How did this happen? I mean, how could this happen even in the first place? Yeah, It's just um, people went into work tonight and this is what happened. Mm -hmm. So we're going to 
fill you in on yeah, what's recap. happened so far tonight. For those who are just tuning in right now. So 1107 is when those first reports started to come in of 911 calls. 911 calls. Mm -hmm. Shots fired at the FedEx facility, the ground facility near in Indianapolis International Airport. In 1123, you know, police indicated that they may have found a person responsible deceased, and that is confirmed at this point, followed by 1140 chaplains being called out and 12 45 this morning so this all started last night and continuing into this morning SWAT reports they've cleared the building and it's very active still and there could be about a hundred people working there tonight so there's going to be a lot of people a lot of people heard those shots going off so there's a lot of questions about how many shooters there was what exactly was happening how many shots were fired we do know that 911 was flooded with calls from how many people were calling in about those shots fired. One of those people there was this witness that Cornelius Hawker talked to right when Cornelius got on the scene just after learning about this incident. Uh, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little overwhelmed. I've worked here for 10 years. I, and I have never seen that happen in my life. <laughs> that was an experience. It's an experience no one wants to have, especially when you're going to work yeah. and just going about your day. These are all images that our photographers have taken at the scene from earlier th this morning, tonight, whatever time of day it might be for you. Mm -hmm. And it's been a developing situation right now. It's the families that we're thinking about and the families at Holiday and Express. That's where they've been asked to go because employees we are being told that they probably did not have their phones with them while working inside the facility. Correct. So families have been having a very difficult time getting a hold of them. Mm -hmm. I've been keeping an eye on our WRTV Facebook page and seeing the comments from viewers and people who are keeping track of everything online. And a lot of people have been commenting that they can't get a hold of their cousin or their friend or their family member, whoever it may be at work. And so if that is you, you need to go to the Holiday Inn Express where Family 85. is gathering to mm -hmm. get that information. 8555 Stansted Drive. And really to, to bring it back to the moments leading up to all of this, Amanda, you know, we were able to dig through and pull up the dispatch uh, call. Go ahead and take a listen to that here. Dispatch news in reference to 8951 Maryville Road. Be advised, another caller heard 10 shots from near the front of the entrance. Caller says possibly from inside. No further seen or heard less than one minute ago. And I have an email who's in the control room who advised the subjects are still shooting. She does not have a vigil, but can hear the shot. Units in Reston Maribel Road. Additional callers say there's possible person shot laying near security in the front entrance of the building. And we were told that people were shot inside and outside of that FedEx ground facility. So mm -hmm. this happened in the parking lot and inside, inside the building. We are still trying to figure out who this suspect was, who the shooter was, mm -hmm. how was he connected, why did he do it? Those are all questions that it's going to take time to get answers for, and that's what we're waiting for. Right now, the most important thing is making sure the community is safe. Correct. Which we do know, we do know that. Mm -hmm. IMPD said that there is no active threat to the community. Now it's making sure that the families who are victims of this learn the information are and are able to gather that information mm -hmm. and that's when the media will be told and that that's when we can start and that. really bringing it back to the interview that cornelius got for us earlier you could tell the shock is mm -hmm. still there the processing is still you, you worked somewhere for 10 years this is you should work. feel safe yeah. Mm -hmm. You should feel safe. It's a lot to process. And um, at this point in time, you know, we do have a statement so far from FedEx. And it continues to say, we are aware of the tragic shooting at our FedEx ground facility near the Indianapolis airport. Safety is our top priority. And our thoughts are with all of those who are affected. We're working to gather more information and are cooperating with investigative authorities. Now, you know, according to IMPD, officers, you know, say it's an active shooter incident. Mm -hmm. They have not labeled it technically mm -hmm. as a mass shooting. Um, but to provide some context, you know, it's we've been waiting to hear from the thing. police. The last time we heard from them was about an hour and a half mm -hmm. ago. They are walking up at this time. That's what you can see on your screen right there to give a second update. We have a lot of questions of how many people are victims to this if they know who the shooter was. And that's what we're waiting for right now. And that's what families are waiting for right now to know 
is their is, loved one is, safe? Is my is yeah. my is my person okay? So, IMPD officer PIO Janae Cook is walking up to the media right now. That's who you see walking up with that notepad to give an update on what happened tonight. We're going to take Good a morning. Listen. I want to take a minute to uh, recap what we've already discussed. But just after 11 o'clock this e on Thursday evening, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department responded to 8951 Mirabelle Road, the FedEx Ground Plainfield Operations Center. We received a call reference shots fired to that location. As officers were responded, they, they arrived to an active shooter incident at that location. Preliminary information at this time is that the alleged shooter has taken his own life here at the scene. After a preliminary search of the grounds inside and out, we have located eight people at the scene with injuries consistent to gunshot wounds. Those eight were pronounced deceased here at the scene. We have been made aware of multiple other people with injuries who have been transported to local hospitals or who have transported themselves to local hospitals. IMPD detectives are working with the Indiana State Police detectives, uh, gathering information and interviewing not just those people who are here at the scene, um, but also those who have, been, have gone to uh, area hospitals seeking medical treatment. A family unification center has been established at the Holiday Inn Express 8555 Stansted Drive. Our victims assistance units and chaplain's office are here at the scene and at the family unification center assisting with family members who have shown up to this area. Right now I want to make let everybody know that People here at the scene are still being interviewed by detectives, so they may not have an opportunity to contact their family, but as soon as they are available to, they will. For any and all information about this situation, we're asking that the primary information comes from the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department Public Affairs Office. We will be your source for the most accurate and up-to-date information. You can reach us at impd.publicaffairsoffice, correction, impd.publicaffairs at indy.gov for information. Anyone that was here and who left the scene to seek medical treatment or just for safety, we ask that you contact either 262 TIPS and give us your information and anything that you may know or contact our homicide office at 317-327-3475. It's important to know that emotions are very high here. There are a lot of people, not just officers, but family members who are still arriving and still learning about this incident. This occurred after many went to, went to bed and some were just now waking up to this. We ask for your continued support for everyone here involved. We understand that there are a lot of moving parts and we ask for your patience as we gather the most accurate information and so that that information comes to you and you can and relay it accurately to everybody else. We don't want to give out information that may hurt somebody. Today, keep with this moment in perspective. This is a horrific situation. Eight people dead. Uh, just, can you just, it's a tough, this is heartbreaking. It is very heartbreaking. And you know, in the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, the officers responded, they came in, they went in and they did their job. And a lot of them are trying to face this because this is a site that no one should ever have to see. But we as Indianapolis members need to come together. We need to support each other and understand that there are gonna be people out there that are gonna be emotionally upset and we need to support them regardless of the, any circumstance. Um, this is a tragedy, but yet through it all, we, we will come through it, you know, with flying colors. Can you talk can about I, the bravery? 
Do no, you I have can't. any information? I do not have that information What's right that? now. She's an employee, Jimmy. At this time, it's still early to tell. Um, they're still try attempting to identify different people, and we need to make proper notification at this time. First. Have any law enforcement officers been injured? No, they have not. When you talk about how many people were injured, Janae, going to different hospitals, can you give us a ballpark at this time? Dozens, hundreds? No. Um, you know, we know for sure that we had um, four people transported by ambulance, one in critical condition with gunshot injuries consistent with gunshot wounds. We had three others that were transported um, with various other injuries. And then we had two other people that were here at the scene, treated by medical staff, and then released from by that. Um, we've had multiple other walk-ins to different local hospitals um, around this area. We have to understand that you know we are in Marion County, but some of that we are very near to two other counties, um, and some of them are going to other counties for medical treatment. Um, so. This is where we continue to reach out and find out, you know, ask for them to call us, let us know what they what they saw, what they heard. It's very important that we work together on this. It's it's a facility still I'm sorry. Hundreds of people work at that facility. Can you tell us, will it remain open? Or should people report to work? What should people do who are waking up this morning, seeing all of these images and wondering, what do I do? Do I go to work? Do I stay home? What do I do? I think the best thing for them to do is contact their supervisor um, or the human resources office. This building is going to be closed for a while due to this investigation. This is going to go long into the morning. There are a lot of components that detect and get the evidence picked up. Can you talk about the brain the ninth or the eighth? Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Can you talk about Can you talk about the bravery of the officers and and the first responders and those that, uh, as the shooting was going on, were helping each other and making sure that people were safe? Can you Can you give us any insight into that? Because my understanding is that officers, when they arrived on the scene, obviously did their jobs. But also, there were good Samaritans who also helped one another to make sure that people were safe. You know, I don't have a lot of the in, independent stories that you're looking for. Um, it, like I said, detectives are still talking with people. We don't have that information. The officers came in. And without second thought, they went in to try to help people. Janae, are the eight dead? Is the, is the gunman part of that number of eight? No, he would be the ninth. He would be the ninth. Okay. And do we know anything about the person who was found dead, ma'am? My understanding is that he was quickly found by a Metro police officer, I believe 17 minutes after the initial shots. Can you tell us anything about that at all? I know it's an investigation. I don't, we don't want to get in the way of an ongoing investigation, but anything you can tell us? You know, there's a lot of things that we're trying to gather also. Um, but right now, it's too early to give out any preliminary information on that. Um, we're still trying to ascertain the, the exact reason and, you know, cause for this incident. So. Talk about whether gunmen go in and just start firing or were there any hostage? You know, Courtney, that's that's something that we're still trying to figure out exactly how, why, um, what went on. And that's going to be a, this is going to be an investigation that goes on throughout the day. Um, we're going to brief again. This will be our last brief from here at the scene. But we will have a um, press conference later on this morning and we will notify each one of you at the exact time and location. Today, one more question. We're seeing mass shootings across the country. You folks that wear blue or green or brown, as the airplane goes by, are dealing with these situations. What do you tell the public? Again, waking up this morning, they're going to see their Twitter feed, their Facebook feed. They're going to watch something on television. What do you tell people who are wondering what the heck is going on? You know, that's a great question. You know, you have to you have to look at your own life and say, you know, look at the positive things in your own world. And you have to keep going and you got to look for a way to support each other, whether it's your neighbor, the guy down the street, your family member. That's where you have to start at and you just keep supporting each other and it will always get better. Thank, Thank you. So and we just heard from IMPD Public Affairs Officer Janae Cook with an update. Rafael Sanchez is joining us live. Rafael, we asked, we heard you talking to her about what just happened. Mm -hmm. It was the news we didn't want to hear. Eight people killed in this tragic, horrible incident. Tonight, and even Rafael. more injured. Yeah. How, how do you begin the day? How do you begin this moment in time? Again, you heard from Metro Police saying that eight people that worked at that FedEx ground facility here near the airport 
uh, were killed today while on the job uh, when someone came upon the facility. My understanding, based on sources, that it was a male being described as a male with uh, the, using what is being described as a long gun, came onto the grounds of this very busy facility, which is now closed for this investigation, and began shooting. The first shots began, reports of shots began around 11 o'clock last night, and of course reports just came in from inside and outside the facility that they could hear the gunshots, and now we know that eight lives, eight people, who were supposed to be home later today will not make it home today because of the actions of one person. We don't know why this happened. We know that these mass shootings have become, uh, they're being described as an American phenomena only happening in our country. The reason for this shooting is still not known, but obviously as you heard from Officer Cook, this investigation is now fully underway. We're being kept at a distance from the facility, which is understandable. We're also being kept at a distance from where the families are reporting to find out what, what is going on. But I can tell you that the investigation is now underway. We're trying to do our very best to, to get you the very best information at this point. A couple of things. If you do work at the FedEx facility, that you should call in to see what you should do. You heard from Officer Cook saying that you should call your supervisor to see what actions you should take before you head out to the west side of Indianapolis today. For those of you who are also just getting all of this information right now, seeing all of these images, seeing all of these reports, the FedEx uh, ground facility is at a distance, a, a short distance from the FedEx facility, the big facility where dozens upon dozens of flights leave every day around the country and around the world. That facility was not impacted. That facility is the second busiest uh, hub for FedEx. There will be no issues at that facility. And of course, those of you who are waking up and, and are thinking, what do I do? Is my flight going to leave today from Indianapolis International Airport? Yes, most uh, flights leave Indianapolis International at 6 in the morning for hubs around the country or for non-direct or for direct flights to New York City. For example, those flights will leave on time today. So air travel out of Indianapolis will not be impacted this morning based on this ongoing investigation. So a lot to unpack. Uh, many more calls to be made, Amanda and Megan, but of course, we'll continue to stay on top of this, not only here on air, but also online on WRTV. Dot com. Now back to you Ra in Studio A. Ralph, before you go, I think something interesting that we heard from uh, Officer Cook. Uh, Janae mm -hmm. Cook was we heard eight people were killed, others were injured, and that some people were had various other injuries. I'm assuming that had to do with just trying to get around things that were happening. I don't know what you've heard there. Um, and then also that some people also transported well. themselves to the hospital. Yeah, and Amanda, I've heard a lot already, and I'm going to try to reserve some of my reporting until I can confirm all the different facts. But I have to tell you that there are reports of people hiding under conveyor belts as they heard the gunshots. There are people reports of people fleeing uh, as they heard the gunshots. Uh, and so this is a horrific thing that I, can, now I can't even begin to imagine what people actually saw and how they felt and what they had to do. There are reports of people in a panic calling loved ones, saying that something was happening at the job. And so as you can imagine, and really we can't even imagine what happened at this FedEx ground facility today. We're going to hear a lot of these stories, I think, in the days to come. If you look on Twitter right now or on Facebook, people already beginning to report what they saw, what they felt, the pain, the agony of losing eight people, eight co-workers. Uh, this is something that you, we probably will hear. This should not have happened in Indianapolis. It should never happen anywhere. But many of these folks are going to say, why did it happen here? Those are the kinds of stories that will emerge as the sun rises later today here in Indianapolis. And this is just a very difficult day. I mean, this is a city where we just saw earlier this year uh, five people killed in a mass shooting, including a baby. That would be six people. So this is really our biggest mass shooting casualty event in our city this year, maybe even in our city's history. So we'll have to just, we'll have to put this all in perspective as more inf information comes out. But as you also heard, and as we reported, Amanda, when I was with you on the anchor desk, every available chaplain was called out today to deal with the emotion of the moment. These are families 
that are heartbroken. These are families that we cannot even begin to understand the depth of their pain. These are people uh, who they loved, people again who they were hoping, they were counting on being home later today. This is not what they expected to hear as they went to bed last night. So we'll continue to follow their stories and we'll continue to bring you the information as, as it emerges. But as far as all the different details, Amanda, I'm going to wait uh, maybe a couple of hours before I start reporting on some of those mm -hmm. until A, we can confirm all those facts, but more importantly, uh, just out of sensitivity. I think we could all understand that what happened just a couple of hours ago here in our hometown of Indianapolis was simply horrific. And just, it is a painful day, not only to report it, but also to see the faces of the people who are now showing up to a hotel to talk to a chaplain to be told that their loved one is either one, injured, or maybe dead. Rafael, you're so right. Eight families are having the worst moment of their life right now. Yeah. And it's just... It shakes you to the core. It really does. And, and Officer Janae Cook said this is a sight no one should have to see. Mm -hmm. And to catch you up, at just after 3 a.m., we heard from IMPD for the second time since this incident happened just after 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. last night. Now, what we were told was just after 11 tonight, IMPD responded to Mirabel Road at the FedEx Ground Plainfield Operations Center. That's near Indianapolis International Airport where shots were fired at that location. We are told that IMPD, when they arrived, it was still an active shooter situation. We have learned since then, just in the last less than 15 minutes, eight people were killed and found dead at that facility. Eight people that were there for work tonight. We don't know exactly who they are yet, if they knew the shooter, what happened with that. But right now we know eight families lost someone tonight. That is eight Hoosiers mm -hmm. and so many more that their lives changed forever tonight. We do know that family. there have been multiple people that are injured. There was eight found by police with gunshot wounds there. Other people have been transported to the hospital. Some sent. even drove themselves. And we know that one is in critical condition, so we are continuing to follow that. Yep. There is a family unification center at the Holiday Inn Express at 8555 Stansted Drive, and that's where family is learning the news of what happened. Also, the last piece of information I want to give is that we were told that you may not have heard from your family yet mm -hmm. because they are still being interviewed by detectives. So give it time. I know Correct. in a moment like this, you're saying I need to know now because that's there's a family. sense of urgency. Yeah, absolutely. But they are asking you to give it time. They are being questioned. They are being talked to by detectives. So they may not have been able to contact their family just yet. So if that gives you, you some hope, notification center. Yes. yes. So if that gives you some mm -hmm. hope right now, just know that they may not just be able to talk to you yet. And one last note, you know, I, I know we heard from police earlier and they said what they need right now is patience, mm -hmm. they need time, and they need tips. So if you have any information, please give them a call. That number, 317-262-TIPS. So reach and out to IMPD, they are heading this investigation. This is a developing story. There is no active threat to the community at this time. Mm -hmm. This shooter, police say, was found deceased at the scene. They said that the shooter did take his own life. So again, no active threat to the community, but many families, their lives changed tonight. And as the hours and the days go on, we're gonna, going to figure out the how, the why, what went on, what happened, and how could this happen here in our home of Indianapolis. So yeah. our thoughts go to all those Hoosier families that are broken tonight. And, and we hope that everyone stays with us, you know, mm -hmm. as we continue to follow the situation. I mean, really, this is developing, and it is such a pivotal moment, I would mm -hmm. say, even for our community so at in this a tragic time, way. So. At yeah, this time, on. we're going to have more information coming to you on Good Morning Indiana starting at 4.30. You can also follow live updates on WRTV.com and the WRTV app, and we will continue to update you with any information that we get. Thanks for joining us. See you on GMI.